are important to America, and they are important to Americans. The companionship of trees is essential to good living. They represent the great matchless beauty of the out of doors. They give a magnificence to the landscape and a calm restfulness to the places where we live. They are good neighbors. Trees provide an artistic setting for old, well-established homes. And started early, they make our surroundings more homelike and pleasant. The personality of a home grows with its trees. Walnut, elm, oak, or maple street. These are names that have come from our deep-rooted liking for trees. Our parks are more inviting when Mother Nature produces a tree like this graceful willow, or this fine field-grown shagbark hickory along a country lane. And what is more pleasing than a flowering dogwood in early spring? Truly the pride of our American woods. The lofty stature and graceful symmetry of the white pine is worthy of admiration. The sugar maple. There's something inspiring about great leafy giants whose protecting branches give beauty and shade. Trees need care. They appreciate good treatment and will respond to it in a pleasing way. Davy men are thoroughly trained and fully equipped to handle all phases of shade tree care. Let's go along with these men to see firsthand what can be done to keep... Trees should be of broken or diseased branches. From the viewpoints of health and safety, this is good practice. Decaying branches are a menace to the health of trees and a hazard to all who pass beneath. The cutting out of dead wood requires special handling to do a workmanlike job. Tree feeding is another way to give valuable assistance to the continued healthy life of a shade tree. Special tree food properly applied is vitally important for enriching the soil and restoring vigor. Spraying trees requires a skillful technique plus a thorough knowledge of tree diseases. Some tree diseases and most of the destructive insects can be effectively controlled by proper scientific spraying. Trees with structural weakness can usually be strengthened to resist the action of wind or frost. Many trees have trunks that divide leaving dangerous V-shaped forks that may split. If the weak forks have not started to give way, Cables are installed in the branches high in the top. The strengthening of weak trees requires skillful workmanship and the right materials to permit an ample margin of safety under all conditions. Keeping telephone and electric power lines clear helps to ensure uninterrupted trouble-free service. Branches must be pruned to keep them from touching or falling on the lines. This work is done by a line clearing squad with special care not to destroy the beauty of the trees. Combating tree killing decay is the highly specialized work of the expert tree surgeon. Tree decay can be compared with the decay of a tooth and both must be treated by trained surgeons. Modern tree surgery and tree care are the outgrowth of the pioneering work of John Davy, the founder of modern tree surgery. His publication of The Tree Doctor in 1901 aroused the interest of all tree-minded people. In 1909, the Davy Tree Expert Company had its beginning at Kent, Ohio. The company put squads to work first in the east, the middle west, then south to Florida and the Gulf states, the far west, and Canada. It is the oldest and largest concern of its kind in the world. Caring for trees is an interesting, healthful outdoor occupation. It is hard work and requires travel. Men between 18 and 30 with good health, ambition, intelligence, and responsibility make good tree men. Let's take Bill Smith here. He seems interested as he watches a Davy tree squad in action. He talked to the foreman and arrangements were made for him to report to Kent, Ohio for training in the care of trees. Bill's schooling, his references, and his character are carefully checked. Then a talk with the employment manager who welcomes him to the Davy organization. Group insurance and other advantages are explained. The Davy personnel department will closely follow Bill's progress throughout his entire training and future association with the company. He receives a careful going over by the company doctor. Every man reporting to Kent for basic training must pass this thorough physical examination. It is the equivalent of an examination for life insurance for working in trees requires strong, healthy bodies. His eyes are carefully examined, for his future work will require good eyesight. 
When the doctor gives his well-considered approval for physical fitness, Bill meets the director of basic training who will guide him and the others in his class with their studies in the care of trees. The basic training program has been developed from years of experience and practical knowledge in the various skills essential for tree work. Next, he is outfitted with regulation clothing. Each man buys his own clothes which consist of breeches, work shirt, sweatshirt, jacket, gloves, and high top leather boots. Bill appears to be mighty proud of his newly acquired black leather boots. He gives them the once over for general appearance. Then for a real close up examination. He notices the flap for protection in climbing a tree or a rope. The composition soles for good footing on branches. This will be his standard uniform for the training period as well as his working outfit in the field. During the basic training, Bill will stay in the company dormitory. He is assigned a locker and a bunk which will come in mighty handy after a hard day's work learning the knack of his new profession. For as we have said before, tree work is hard work. The first class session is about the company he is starting in with. Right now, Bill and all the others are trainees. Davy men in the top positions all started as trainees. It is in the lecture room that the class learns the theory and fundamentals of their new work. For example, here is Bill in a knot tying class. He must learn to tie knots correctly. The bowline is used whenever a loop is required at the end of a rope. There will be many times when he'll use this one. Here is the start of a knot he will use each and every time he works in a tree. It's called a bowline on a bite, and it is a very important knot to know. When tied, it forms a non-slipping double loop for secure support while working in trees. The beginner must learn and learn well such knots as the taut line hitch. This is a safety first knot. With your hand clasped around it, it will slip, but release your grip and the knot tightens securely. We will see this knot in action when Bill's training requires climbing and working in trees. He must be able to tie all of his working knots swiftly and surely until they become second nature with him. He will use them repeatedly in his work, and practice does make for perfection. Tools and their uses are carefully explained to the class. Each man is held responsible for the tools he uses. In training and on the job, he must know how to use them and how to take care of them. Instructions are given in the care and use of ladders. A thorough knowledge of all equipment is an important part of the training. Each man learns how ladders are put together and taken apart. Bill comes to understand each part of his work by actually doing each step. Complete understanding and objective of the basic training. Automotive equipment and the proper storage of tools and working equipment come in for their share of close study by members of the group. The men do the work after the instructor explains how it should be done. Safety first regulations, such as the proper procedure when ladders extend beyond the end of the truck, are brought to the attention of the class. Safety of men and equipment underlies all phases of training. Training is not all within the confines of the classroom. Most of the classes are held outdoors in the training woods. Here is a continuation of the ladder. Instructor shows the right way so that Bill and the others learn how to carry ladders the correct and incidentally the easy way. Then too, the group spends considerable time learning how to throw a rope. Proper coiling plus knowing how and when to let go must be learned by doing not once but many times. New techniques and new skills come thick and fast in the basic training. Rope climbing is much easier than it first appears, especially when you follow the tried and proved method demonstrated by the instructor. Each man is taught how to use his feet and the rope to assist him in climbing. Once this simple trick is mastered, it is almost like walking up the rope. Ease in climbing and conservation of energy are the lessons to be learned. And as in Rope climbing is followed by training in the art of climbing trees. This method is called the double knee grip and is used on large trees. 
It works to perfection on large trees, but there's a better way for climbing smaller trees. The instructor demonstrates the one-leg wraparound, or heel and toe method, one of the tricks of the trade. Since tree climbing is hard work, Bill must know all of the tricks that make it easier and conserve his energy. Now for a lesson on walking in trees. It is best to walk a little off-center, putting a strain on the safety line. Bill tries it. Cautious at first. Oops, look out! But it's nothing serious. Tree walking is thing on a sidewalk, especially after you've mastered the taut line hitch in the knot tying class. A rope is used in all operations off the ground. It provides security and safety. Now for that important second try. You know the old saying that starts, if at first you don't succeed, well, it comes in mighty handy when you're learning your way around in trees. It isn't long in the field. Get used to high places. Next, after learning how to get around in trees, Bill must learn the various kinds of work that he will have to do when working in trees. In the classroom, he is taught the theory of tree pruning, when to prune and how to prune. Pruning trees is more than just knowing how and why and where to make the cuts. Another important part of pruning is in getting to the locations where the cutting is to be done. Getting up there and knowing what to do is the result of combining several skills learned in the basic training and practice sessions in the training woods allow him to perfect his methods. Back in the classroom, he learns the best way to saw limbs off trees. First, you make an undercut. Second, you make a cut on top of the limb so that the breakage line will connect the first two cuts. This prevents stripping the bark when the limb falls. Then a flush cut at the trunk of the tree. Let's watch and see how Bill learned this lesson. The undercut, the overcut, and quicker than you can say Jack Robinson, off goes the limb, clean as a whistle. Then the flush cut. And you always protect the cut or shiner with weatherproof tree paint. An indoor forest is provided for this training. Trainees are required to prepare several cavities during the class period. Individual instructions, with the reasons why, give the men confidence and the ability to do the job as it should be done. Each man understands the reasons behind the work and the best way to cut away the decayed parts of trees. But only the fundamentals of tree surgery are taught in the basic training. The precise finishing touches in cavity treatment are learned later under fully qualified tree surgeons whose basic training, however, was just like this. A final class period is held for review, and if everything has been learned to the satisfaction of the instructor, an OK is given by him, and Bill will find himself sewing the Davy emblem on his shirt, his symbol of achievement, an award of merit, of which he is understandably proud. The emblem is the outward sign of his first step forward, for he is now a full-fledged field man. Well prepared to take his assignment in a regular Davy tree squad, he is ready to leave for his assignment to one of the many regular squads at work in the field. The Davy Tree Squad is an efficient, well-organized unit headed by a foreman who supervises all activities. Bill soon becomes acquainted and will learn to coordinate his work with the squad. This unit works as a team, each man capable of performing many skills. Each new man going to work for the first time is taking with him a solid background of training which gives him confidence. The theory and practice of his basic training course are put to good use by doing the work assigned to the group. At first, Bill is only given work that he knows about. The quality of any tree service is only as good as the training and experience of the men who perform the work, and Davy men are well trained. The training is continuous. Each foreman is an instructor and carefully explains new phases of tree work. For example, strangling root growth. The foreman shows what happens to the tree under this condition, how it cuts off circulation, and how to correct the condition. The next time this particular situation arises, Bill will be able to do a capable job all by himself. There is little routine about tree work. There is something new and different every day. 
Bill also learns more about his future in trees through a comprehensive extension course prepared by the Davy Institute of Tree Service. The lessons cover many additional phases of advanced tree work that he is expected to know. This course of carefully prepared lessons, each with an answer sheet, is sent out at his request. After study, the answer sheets are filled in and mailed to the home office in Kent, Ohio for grading. In these various ways, Bill improves the work of the squad. He perfects his old skills and learns new ones. He knows his business and he likes it. Bill's extra training and Bill's good work show up on the graphic rating report that the foreman sends to headquarters periodically for each of his junior field men. When the foreman considers a man ready for further training, he is recommended for advanced training at the Davy Institute of Tree Service. Bill buys his own books for study, for now he will get into some precise training on the care and well-being of trees, soils, and other related subjects. These books will be studied during his training and will be extremely valuable as reference works when he's out in the field. He will have comprehensive training on tree identification. He will learn to identify a tree by closely observing its buds and twigs. The oaks, the maples, the elms, the conifers, the deciduous. He must know them all for he knows that each tree is an individual and requires individual treatment. Bill learns the advanced steps of tree surgery. In his basic training, he went only as far as cavity preparation. Now he learns how to put on those extra professional finishing touches. He will be a qualified tree surgeon when he finishes this class. He gets into the subject of cabling and bracing. He learns the mechanical construction of a tree and how to strengthen it to avoid wind damage. Bill learns the art of cable wrapping. He bends the wire in the proper places and inserts the thimble. Soon this will be easy, but right now he proceeds carefully, checking each step. It takes real intelligence and plenty of natural ability to perform the many tasks necessary to care for trees. Moving and transplanting trees will be a part of his future work, so with this practice block, the instructor teaches the group how to wrap root balls in burlap for protection while moving. There are many tricks to be learned in this business of caring for trees, and keeping your saw sharp is a very important one. He finds out just how the teeth of saws should be filed to produce a fine cutting edge. And again, he learns by doing. Intimate personal instruction like this makes sure that each individual knows how to do each and every job correctly and efficiently. Bill delves into the fascinating life cycles of tree-damaging insects and diseases. He finds out about caterpillars, worms, aphids, leaf spots, blights, and beetles. Yes, there's a lot to learn, but after this training, he will be familiar with the many enemies of trees and will have the ability to do something about them. He studies the properties of sprays and finds out when and where they can be used effectively. Closely following this, he learns about sprayers, Progress in spray equipment and chemicals is rapid, and he must keep up to date on all developments. He discovers the operating principles of all new equipment, learns how and why they operate. This information is essential for proper operation and maintenance of spraying equipment in the field. The successful completion of the course at the Davy Institute of Tree Service is a big step forward for Bill. Now he is well qualified to teach and direct men in the exacting, specialized work of expert tree man. A big part of his regular work will be in the training and instruction of new men, giving them the benefit of his extensive practical experience. Many and varied are the problems of working in trees, and an interesting outdoor life awaits those men qualified for this highly specialized profession. This training of Bill Smith is typical of most men now employed by the Davy Tree Company. It also shows what awaits those men between the ages of 18 and 30 who are interested in qualifying for an exciting future, for future in trade.